So going into this movie, I wasn't expecting much to be honest. I did see that Blumhouse was making it, so that was a big plus because I'm a big fan of some of their movies. But I just didn't see how a Five Nights at Freddy's film adaptation was going to work here, especially with all the hype that's been built around it. But I did have some faith at least. I mean, anything is possible, right? But then the Rotten Tomato score came out and it was a 37%. I saw that and I just started laughing because I was like, I knew it. I knew it. And here comes all the coping from the fans. And disclaimer before I get further into this video. I wasn't necessarily a fan of the series. But don't get me wrong. I wasn't a hater or anything. I never played any of the games. But I definitely did see the impact of the whole franchise. When it has been picking up over the. What's about to be the past 10 years or so now. And I did respect that. I mean how could you not. The fan base and everything that was built over the past decade. Has been incredible to see. I mean Markiplier blew up because of the series. We saw plenty of memes come out of it. Like the Bite of 87. Just saw plenty of talented people grow up with this franchise and as of more recently it's even still being played by plenty of top streamers like I Show Speed. But yeah I mean this movie has been in the making for about the past decade so to see everyone else being excited about it made me look forward to it. So in order to get into that Five Nights at Freddy's mood I went ahead and watched some lore videos to see what was up because I know that that has been a huge thing in the community over the years. So I watched this 10 minute long video one and it was pretty confusing at first because everything was new to me. At least wrapping my head around everything was. So then after that I watched this one that was about an hour and a half long. There's plenty of hour plus long videos talking about the lore but I watched this one because it was fairly recent and it had the most views. I watched it, learned a good bit and then I went back to the 10 minute one just to see if they were about the same. And yeah with that I was basically caught up on the lore I guess. Still complex for a newcomer like me but man did that get me ready for the movie as I had at least now known the basics. I was ready to back up the FNAFers even though I had kind of made fun of them beforehand not gonna lie with the comments about the coping and stuff but hey I did my homework now. So obviously I'm not going to talk about spoilers right away until much later. And with that I'll have some text on the screen saying that spoilers are being discussed. But it won't even be that long of a discussion anyway. Now for the movie, I'm not a film expert by any means. I just enjoy watching them. But I will say that this movie was pretty nice man. For a critic, I can see why they may have rated it super low. Because I mean, just think about it. If there was a movie out there, just like this one, but without any of the Five Nights at Freddy's intellectual property, like their trademarks and everything, I don't think that people would be as huge as fans as they were for this one here. It will probably even be forgettable I'd say. But with this movie being Five Nights at Freddy's, it was done well in my opinion. I found it interesting that they didn't just fully go into this being a story about only just about a security guard trying to stay alive for five nights. There was additional story elements here talking about trying to reconnect with a past loved one, still trying to be connected with current family members, and then having the murderous animatronics go after him. The main character that is. I thought that all of this in the movie was well blended. Maybe they overdid it a bit with the dream scenario. I would like for the movie to have stayed on the pizzeria ambience a little bit more as I thought it was pretty cool But I can see why the dreams were necessary here to the extent that they were on the screen And hey if anything it just leaves you wanting for more of that pizzeria setting in the next movies If that's where they decide to go of course now some parts of the movies were a bit goofy I'm not gonna lie they did have those cliche moments where a character would enter a quiet place and say something like hello like I get that it sets the tone, but dude, it's just so comical at this point to still have that type of dialogue, albeit it's one word, but in modern movies now, come on dude. But at least it wasn't like any of those corny movie lines that people were memeing on TikTok recently, saying that they're going to be leaving the movie theater once a cringe line comes up on the screen. It wasn't that bad, but still, some lines were just like eye rollers. The kills, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't too fond of them. Maybe that's because I'm familiar with rated R horror movies that have those brutal kills and everything. But in this movie, there was one kill that if you have seen the film you know which one I'm talking about you know the one that happened in around the first half of the movie yeah that one was pretty good and it did catch me off guard now onto jump scares there were some jump scares and usually I would find them kind of unnecessary nowadays in movies if they're not good ones that is but I mean this franchise was built on jump scares so them being in the movie was passable so I'll allow it I'll even say that he could have used a few more but what was in the movies which is fair enough now actors wise they were pretty much all good none really took me out of the film so probably to every one of them especially for Matthew Lillard's performance I enjoyed his the most even though he was in the movie not that much but it's always interesting seeing him in movies as he was a good old Stu from Scream and Shaggy from the Scooby-Doo movies it's still cool seeing him killing it in roles nowadays and finally what we're gonna get into with the non-spoiler part of this video I do want to talk briefly about the PG-13 rating because I know that that was a fairly huge discussion in the community to me I didn't mind it being PG-13 we all knew that this was the targeted rating as much of the fan base is around this age range the movie did do good with this rating it was still somewhat brutal and did the job of at least somewhat showing the deaths I don't think that we needed to see rated R 
blood and guts everywhere and the full-on kills taking place, I think that PG-13 did serve just as well here. And honestly, I don't think that the sequel would need to be rated R at this point. Like I said, it was fairly good for PG-13. Now, if in that sequel, if viewers show some fatigue from not being able to get those visually brutal kills on screen, then I could see the third movie going for that R rating. But for it to go to that, I think that it would have to be necessary for the film. In my opinion, you can't just make a rated R film for the sake of it being rated R. It has to be impactful, it has to be necessary, it has to be important, and it has to be used well. Because you and I, and the studios, know that that PG-13 movie money hits different, and it just has that really young, engaging audience coming in and spreading the word of the movie, the franchise, and everything else. But yeah, that's that for that. As for a post credit scene, there isn't one, but there is a make credits one, so if you want to stick around for that, you can, and I would recommend you do. It's nothing too important, but it is a humorous one. As for my rating, I'm gonna give it a nice 8 out of 10 baboons. Would definitely recommend to fans of the franchise. Would recommend to someone that's on the internet but doesn't know of the franchise. And it's just for like a completely random person that doesn't know anything about the internet and is only just a pure film critic, isn't interested in anything else. I don't think this, this would be good for them, but you know, once you're in this world of the internet and see how interesting this franchise is and can be, it's just something that you like recommend anybody really, no matter who they are. But yeah, a nice 8 out of 10 baboons, I'll give this one. Alright, now let's get into some of the spoilers. As I said, I'm not gonna go into them too much, but there were some cool things to talk about. So with the spoilers text on the screen now, you may now leave if you don't want to be spoiled. Otherwise, let's get into it. So there's probably a bunch of easter eggs that I miss, and I'm sure that there's plenty of other videos out there already discussing them, so I'm just gonna leave that up to them. But those that know me know that I'm well versed in the YouTube scene, and we saw a fellow YouTuber in Corey Extension showing up in the film. Now, we knew that he was already gonna be in the movie from the trailers and stuff, but he was pretty good in the film for the short time that he was in. I enjoyed his acting, and then he was also in the mid credit scene and still did a good job in it. Hopefully we see him in the next movie again, if they do make a sequel. I have a feeling that if he does, he might get the axe if you know what I mean, but hopefully that won't be the case. And in this movie, we also saw the other YouTuber, MatPat, show up in the scene with the diner, and they even had him say the thing. It was great to see him there, as we all know that he has put an insane amount of time into the Game Theory Five Nights at Freddy's videos, and will would now surely be into his Film Theory ones as well. So props to him for that. Now, one that was missing was was Markiplier. They probably have some good plans for him now in the sequel, but for this one, he couldn't make it due to scheduling issues, and I'm gonna call it now. Markiplier is gonna be in one of the following movies, likely in the next one, and they're gonna have him be explaining some of the backstory of the pizzeria as a character to one of the main ones. And I bet you they're gonna have him say the iconic line of the bite of 87 or 83 because that's what it was in the lore, but yeah. I'm calling that now. As for Springtrap, I hope that they bring him back in the next film, and Matthew Lillard as well, as I seen that Matthew signed a 3 film deal with Five Nights at Freddy's, so surely he'll be back. But man, you know, the Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Fox animatronics were cool and all, love the practical effects, but there was just something so cool in seeing Springtrap's movement in the movie. And as for future films being confirmed, I mean it's basically guaranteed that they'll be coming back. Because look at how much they made already, it's actually kind of crazy. And in case anybody's wondering if they are going to be making sequels, I mean, the studio is rolling in the bank right now, so the sequels are basically a guarantee now. Oh, and as for the Rotten Tomato score ratings, Jason Bloom just posted about the updated Rotten Tomato score with the audience scores showing up now, and it seems pretty good for FNAF fans. So shout out to all the FNAFers. Y'all went hard in the movie theaters, and now I'm looking forward to the next film, even more now, whenever that will be. And with that, that will be the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in another one.